Hi, I'm Claire Winchester, and today I'm going to talk to you about spring combinations. The objectives for this lesson are to analyze the simple harmonic motion of a spring block oscillator, to calculate an equivalent spring constant for springs in parallel and in series, and to solve problems involving multiple springs. For springs in parallel, you can calculate the equivalent spring constant for the system by starting with Hooke's law, f equals kx. Recognizing that displacement is the same for both springs, we can find that f, oops, f is equal to k1x plus k2x. Or we can write that as f is equal to k1 plus k2 times x. So here we find that keq is equal to k1 plus k2 because they have the same displacement and f is equal to keq times x. For springs in series, you can calculate an equivalent spring constant for the system, beginning the analysis by realizing the force on each spring must be the same according to Newton's third law. So in this case we have F is equal to negative K1X1, which is also equal to negative K2 times X2. So if we have both of those equations equal each other, negative k1 x1 is equal to negative k2 times x2. Divide both sides by k1. We'll find that x1 is equal to k2 times x2 over k1. So next, Recognizing that the total displacement is equal to the sum of the displacement of the springs, you can combine the equations and solve for an equivalent spring constant. So we'll start from the equation that we had before. F is equal to negative KEQ times X1 plus X2. And we're going to substitute in this formula right here. And we'll find that F is equal to negative KEQ times K2X2 over K1 plus X2. Then we can substitute in F is equal to negative K2 times X2. And we find that K2 X2 is equal to KEQ times, oh, sorry, KEQ times X2 times K2 over K1 plus 1. To rearrange that again, we'll find that K2, so divide all the sides by X2. So KEQ, K2 is equal to KEQ times K2 over K1 plus 1. Now, to get that into a form that's a little simpler, we're going to have to do a little bit of algebraic manipulation. So what I'm going to do is multiply this whole thing right here by k1 first. Then I'm going to find that that equals k1 times k2, which is equal to k eq times k2 
plus k eq times k1. Now, I'm going to multiply the entire equation by 1 over k eq and find that k1, k2 over k eq is equal to k eq times k2 over k eq. You can probably see where I'm going with this, plus k eq k1 divided by k eq. So once I multiply all of this again by 1 over k1 k2, I'm going to write this over on the top because I ran out of room. But this gives you a simplified form of 1 over k eq is equal to 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2, which is the equivalent spring constant for springs in series. So the practice problem that I have is rank the spring block oscillators in the diagram below from highest to lowest in terms of equivalent spring constant and period of oscillation. So I'm going to figure out the spring constant and the period for each of the springs and then we can rank them. So for spring A, our spring system A, we have a we are, we're looking at springs in series, so we're going to use 1 over k eq is equal to 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2. So substituting in our numbers, we have 1 over 20 plus 1 over 5, which is, gives us, gives us k, 1 over k eq is equal to 1 over 4. So we know from that that k eq is equal to 4 newtons per meter. And for the period, we're going to use the equation for a period of an oscillating spring, which is Ts is equal to 2 pi times the square root of m over k. So plugging in the numbers for this system, we have 2 pi times the square root of the mass, which is 3 kilograms, divided by the KEQ that we just calculated, 4 newton, meter, newton over meters, which gives us a period of 5.44 seconds. So for B, spring system B, we have two springs in parallel which we know now is actually easier to calculate the spring constant. So k eq of a parallel springs is equal to k1 plus k2, which in this case is 10 plus 15, or 25 newton over meters. And same thing, I'm going to use my ts is equal to 2 pi square root m over k, this time I'm going to substitute in 6 kilograms over 25 newton meters, which gives me a period of 3.08 seconds. And for part system C, we have springs in series again. So 1 over k eq is equal to 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2 which gives us 1 over 15 plus 1 over 15, or 2 over 15. So our k eq is equal to 15 over 2, or 7.5 newton meters. And the period on that guy is going to be ts equal to ts is equal to 2 pi square root m over k, which we'll find to be 3.24 seconds. And finally, we have system D. And the equivalent spring constant for that guy is going to be k eq 
is equal to K1 plus K2, or 20 Newton over meters. And the period is going to look like 2 pi k over square root, or 2 pi times the square root of m over k, which is 2.81 seconds. So to answer our question, rank the spring lock oscillators in the diagram from highest to lowest. For spring constant, it is b is the greatest, followed by d, c, and a. And for period of oscillation, we have A as the greatest, followed by C, B, and D. And for more information on springs, you can go to aplusphysics.com. Thanks.